Imagine receiving an email thanking you for buying a new phone, only you never made that purchase. A chilling thought, isn't it? This is the nightmare that Sharon Hussey, from Bethesda, Maryland, found herself living. One seemingly ordinary day, an unexpected email pops into her inbox, a simple thank you from Verizon for her supposed purchase of a new phone. An honest mistake, one might think, but little did she know, her life was about to take a drastic turn. In the blink of an eye, her contact information at Bank of America was altered. Sharon, who had diligently set up two-factor authentication on all her accounts, was left bewildered. How could this happen? She hadn't made any changes, she hadn't bought a new phone. Now, she was staring at an email that suggested otherwise. The floor beneath her seemed to give way as she grappled with the reality of her situation. Reaching out to her phone to call the bank, she found it inactive. Her lifeline, her connection to the outside world was severed. An attempt to rectify the situation online was met with a brick wall, a verification code that her phone, now a mere paperweight, couldn't receive. The clock was ticking, and with each passing minute, her sense of safety and security was being chipped away. Within what seemed like a heartbeat, her world crumbled. $17,000, her hard-earned money, vanished into thin air. The realization of the magnitude of the situation hit her like a ton of bricks. She thought she had taken all the necessary precautions, made all the right calls, figured things out. But the cruel reality was that her life was spiraling out of control, and there was nothing she could do about it. In a matter of minutes, Sharon's life was turned upside down. Sharon Hussey thought she had everything under control, but she was wrong. A wave of panic washed over her as she realized the severity of the situation. She had always been careful, always ensured she had two-factor authentication on her accounts. Yet, she found herself at the mercy of an invisible thief, seemingly outsmarting the layers of security she had put in place. When she received an email from Verizon thanking her for the purchase of a new phone, a purchase she never made, her heart sank. But she didn't let the fear paralyze her. She sprang into action, reaching out to her bank and her phone carrier, hoping to nip the problem in the bud. She thought she had done enough, that she had managed to stop the thief in their tracks. Initially I didn't realize how big of a deal it was. I thought I had handled it on the first day by calling the bank, calling Verizon. Figuring things out, said Hussey. But the nightmare was far from over. Her phone, the device she relied on for so much, went dead. The lifeline to her bank, to her funds, was severed. The verification code she needed to access her bank account online was unreachable, locked behind the screen of a phone that refused to come back to life. And the bottom just kind of dropped out, added Hussey. Then came the gut punch. Her bank account, once housing $17,000, was empty. The money she had worked so hard for, saved so carefully, was gone swiped away in mere minutes by a faceless criminal who had managed to bypass two-factor authentication, a security measure she thought was foolproof. And I have two-factor identification, which ended up biting me in the face when it all came down to it. That was the thing that completely hijacked everything. They had complete control of my phone, and there was nothing I could do about it, said Hussey. Hussey was left reeling, her sense of security shattered. The very measures she had put in place to protect herself had been used against her. With her phone and bank account hijacked, Sharon was left feeling helpless. Her story stands as a chilling reminder that even the most cautious among us can fall victim to the cunning schemes of cyber criminals. You might be wondering how this could happen, especially to someone with two-factor authentication. Well, let's dive into the murky world of SIM card swapping to understand how Sharon Hussey lost her hard-earned money. SIM card swapping, or SIM swapping, is a form of identity theft that has been around for the past four years. But according to security experts, the scale of this type of scam has recently skyrocketed. In 2021, roughly six times as many dollars were stolen through this as the years before, says Alex Quilisi, CEO of Umail. So how does this scam work? It's surprisingly simple. The bad guys convince the telephone company that they have the SIM for your phone number, and the minute the phone company does the swap, they are in control of your number, Quilisi explains. 
This is exactly what happened to Sharon. Someone in California walked into a Verizon store, purchased a new phone along with a new SIM card, and used Sharon's current phone number to activate the new phone. When the new phone was turned on, Sharon's phone went dead. The scammer had complete control over her phone number, and by extension, her two-factor authentication. If you've been doing two-factor authentication everywhere to your mobile phone number, if someone else gets that mobile phone number, they can authenticate as if they are you, warns Quilisi. Unfortunately for Sharon, the very security measure she had put in place to safeguard her accounts ended up aiding the scammer. And I have two-factor identification which ended up biting me in the face when it all came down to it. That was the thing that completely hijacked everything. They had complete control of my phone, and there was nothing I could do about it, Sharon recounts. This simple yet devastating scam has seen a staggering increase in recent years. And as Sharon's case shows, even the most security conscious among us can fall victim to it. When you've been wronged, you fight for justice. Sharon did just that. It was a battle, not against the faceless culprit who had stolen her hard-earned money, but against the very institution she had trusted to keep it safe, Bank of America. In the aftermath of the scam, Sharon Hussey didn't just sit back in defeat. No, she took up arms, metaphorically speaking, and fought for what was rightfully hers. She reached out to Bank of America, filing a claim for the $17,000 that had been stolen from her. Her expectation was that the bank would recognize the fraud, rectify the situation, and refund her money. But the reality turned out to be far from what she had hoped for. For three grueling months, Sharon was caught in a back and forth with the bank. Her claim was initially denied, with the bank stating it couldn't be honored. It was a blow, a tough one to swallow. But Sharon didn't give up. She persisted, standing her ground, demanding justice for the wrong done to her. And you know what they say about persistence, don't you? It pays off. Eventually, Bank of America reversed its initial decision. Sharon's claim was honored, and she was refunded the $17,000 that had been stolen from her. It was a victory, a sigh of relief, a light at the end of a very dark tunnel. Finally, Sharon Hussey got her money back. But the ordeal was far from over. When a crisis strikes, how the involved parties respond can make all the difference. In the wake of the scam, both Bank of America and Verizon, the two corporations directly linked to the incident, had responses that underscored their commitment to customer security. Bank of America, the bank where Sharon Hussey lost $17,000, initially denied her claim. They said it couldn't be honored, an action that could have been devastating for the victim. However, after three long months, the bank reversed its initial decision and refunded the stolen amount. Their statement reflected their stance, saying, we take identity theft very seriously. We are always working to improve the experience knowing that resolving identity theft issues is a complicated process. Verizon, the service provider through which the scammer was able to seize control of Hussey's phone number, also had a say. They expressed their commitment to customer privacy and security in their statement. Verizon values the privacy and security of our customers. Whenever a case of potential fraud is brought to our attention, we work quickly to investigate and resolve the matter. While these responses are reassuring, they also highlight a stark reality. The scam was able to take place despite the security measures in place at these corporations. It shows that there's a need for continuous improvement in security to protect customers from evolving threats. These corporations have shown a commitment to rectify the situation and improve their systems. However, it's important to remember that prevention is better than cure. As consumers, we must also take proactive steps to protect our information and be vigilant about potential threats. Even as corporations promise to improve, the risk remains. Now that you know the threat, it's time to learn how to protect yourself. The harsh reality is that we live in a digital age where scams like SIM card swapping are becoming all too common. But don't worry, there are several proactive steps you can take to avoid falling victim to such scams. Firstly, consider using authenticator apps. These apps generate a unique code every few seconds that you can use for two-factor authentication. 
Because these codes are generated on your device, they remain safe even if your SIM card is swapped. Secondly, keep your personal information hidden. It's easy to overshare in this age of social media, but it's crucial to remember that every piece of personal information you share could potentially be used against you. Be mindful of what you're posting and who can see it. The less information scammers have, the harder it is for them to impersonate you. Another tip is to avoid posting your assets online. Flaunting your wealth can make you an attractive target for scammers. Remember, the internet is a public space and you never know who's watching. Also, consider using biometric security measures like fingerprint or face scans where available. These are much harder for scammers to replicate and can add an extra layer of security to your accounts. Lastly, always stay informed about the latest scams and how they work. Knowledge is power and understanding how scammers operate can help you spot a scam before it's too late. In conclusion, while the digital world can seem like a minefield, with the right precautions, you can navigate it safely. Remember, staying vigilant and informed is your best defense against scams. Sharon Hussey's story is a wake-up call for all of us. In an age where our lives are increasingly digital, it's crucial to be vigilant about the security of our personal information. SIM card swapping scams like the one that targeted Sharon are on the rise and they can happen to anyone, anytime. It's not enough to rely on two-factor authentication alone, as Sharon's case clearly demonstrates. We need to go the extra mile in securing our digital identities. Consider using authenticator apps, hardware tokens, or biometric features like fingerprint or face scans. Keep your personal information hidden and think twice before posting any assets online. Moreover, remember to stay informed about the latest scams and how they operate. Knowledge is power and in this case it's your first line of defense against identity thieves. We all have a role to play in combating this type of cybercrime. The more we know, the more we can protect ourselves and those around us. Don't let yourself be the next Sharon Hussey. Protect yourself and stay safe.